I want to welcome Sammy Joe. Recent champion, Sammy Joe. <laughs> Sammy, tell us a bit about what you just accomplished and a little bit about the ups and downs of being able to do that. Go ahead, Sammy. <laughs> well, that's, that's a massive question, Wally, but thank you. Um, thank you to everybody on this call. First off, Tim, thank you for coming to the game. Um, it was great. I, I'm sad I didn't get to see you in person, but I'm so glad you got to experience it. Yeah, what did you think of the game? I, I, it was a really good, entertaining game. Uh, as I mentioned to you, I was sitting with uh, Steve Baker, who's a teammate from the Rangers and, and New Haven. He's a goalie. His, his son, Steve Jr., is also a goalie. So I was getting the goalie perspective. But uh, Steve's an executive with the new three-on-three -three league. Uh, last year was their first season. It's called Three Ice. And uh, they run in the summertime, and um, so he, like he, uh, Steve, Steve, well, both of them, had really not seen much uh, women's hockey at all. So I was trying to give them some perspective on the background of the players, and certainly mentioned that the, the caliber play was very good, but they're they're missing all of the Olympic players, which at some point we hope. Everybody can get together on the female side and have all the best players in one league. It would be tremendous. But it was a very entertaining game. Well played, uh, exciting back and forth. Um, and nice little crowd there in Tempe. It was really good. Yeah, I was impressed with the crowd considering they had basically two weeks of planning. Um, so I would say they probably got, what would you say, Tim, like 1,200 maybe? That's exactly sort of the area, twelve or 1,500, that I, I thought. Uh, I was thinking, geez, you know, if they could have had it in Toronto, for instance, like, you know, what could they have done with that two-week marketing push, you know? Um, yeah, the, so we hosted the um, semis in Toronto. Yeah. It was exactly that, two weeks that they told us. So the whole year has sort of been like that in that um, we have a new commissioner, Regan Carey. She's incredible. She used to run... USA Hockey, um, the women's program, um, and her coming in really has changed things and elevated things. But it also means that, you know, and me coming in as well, we're kind of all flying by the seat of our pants a little bit as you're planning because you're like so into that planning mode and then you're into the next planning mode of the next planning mode. Yeah. So they knew a couple months prior that the final was going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Sunday night. Um, and that's kind of that was the first thing that they knew they could get it on linear. So then realizing you can't really put an East Coast game 9 p.m. and get crowd. Yeah. So they figured that they would get a neutral site game um, and then started working with some of the NHL clubs on the East or the West Coast to try to get that. So I thought the Tempe um, venue was perfect for women's hockey. I mean, how great would that be to have a full time team there? That'd be incredible. Um, I'm not sure that it's probably great for NHL hockey. Uh, the girls tried to get uh, tickets for the game the next day, but Connor McDavid was playing, so the games were sold out. And I think it only seats about, what would you say, Tim, like 5,000? Yeah, I think it's five or 55, something like that. Um, yeah. But quite a venue. I mean, that venue is, uh, is really state-of-the-art for that size, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. I yeah, was so impressed. That, that was impressive, but... Um, yeah, so getting to see, well, getting to hear that Tim went to the game, that uh, meant a lot. So thank you, Tim. And then I don't know if everybody knows that I got to meet Hal in person a couple, uh, probably about a month ago, uh, when we finished our season playing against Minnesota in Minnesota. Um, unfortunately, I think lines got crossed, and um, I think I either gave to Hal the wrong time of the game, or um, he got the wrong time of the game, but we ended up at the wrong time. And uh, so he didn't actually get to see the game, but he came to the restaurant after because we had uh, like three hours before we had to get on the plane. So that actually probably was better because then I got to sit and hang out with him, which was really special. So um, that was a min different Minnesota team than we faced in the final. That Minnesota team, they have three girls on the U.S. national team and they had just come off the rivalry series. So they were really exhausted. Uh, they didn't play well. 
their starting goalie, Amanda Levele, she's two-time goalie of the year, and uh, she was out on long-term injury reserve. So I didn't think she would even come back for the playoffs, but um, she was back. She was able to beat the Boston team, which had really kind of steamrolled over everybody the entire season. Um, the Boston team has two girls from our national team. And um, anyways, and they had a goalie that had seven shutouts throughout the year, but Minnesota came in and beat them with their U.S. players and um, their great goaltending. So we knew it wasn't going to be easy going into the final and we were going to face a different Minnesota team. But um, our team, I feel like, just never really had quit. We never, we didn't do things the conventional way or make things easy for coaches or make things easy for administrators. Uh, but it re- made it for really entertaining games for fans. We often had to claw back uh, from games. And this was no different. It was tied 2-2 going into the third. And then we went down 3-2. Um, and they came back and they won it. And our girl that scored in overtime, uh, Teresa Venezova, plays on the Czech national team, plays for Carla, played for um, Thomas. Um, and we have two Czech national team players on our team. Um, so those girls partied well into the night and then had to be at uh, training camp the next day. So their flight left at five in the morning to get to the Czech team. Uh, I think they were training in Whitby leading up to the Brampton Worlds. So, but really special for her. Uh, uh, Teresa Venisova has actually won the Isabel Cup three years in a row. Uh, so she was with Boston the last two years and then came to our team and won it with our team. So that was uh, special. So. Yeah, overall, the experience was uh, was amazing. Anybody that's been on the administrative side of hockey um, knows just how many hours it takes. And um, it uh, was way, way, way more work than I anticipated um, because there is no end to the work. And I think that when you're so passionate about something like this, it's really hard to stop. It's really hard to shut down at night. Um, I had to really make a conscious effort every single day to be present for my daughter when she got off the bus. Um, So that was my time with her would be um, getting up in the morning. So I would get up early before she woke up, uh, do about an hour, then be there to make her lunch and get her on the bus and be with her for that 45 minutes and then have her whole school day, make sure from four to seven I was there for her um, and my husband uh, who was doing a gargantuan duty of all the other things that I normally do, Um, and then work another three hours uh, into the night and then try to get some sleep. And it just, every weekend got better for our team in terms of uh, the amount of people that came to the games. And then we finished with that final series in Toronto. Uh, We got to play at TMU, which was really great, thanks to Lisa Haley, and had 1,500 people at three straight games. We lost the first game, won the second in overtime, dramatic fashion and then won the third game. And uh, with so many fans in the crowd, I think that weekend of hockey for me really changed the landscape of women's professional hockey in this country. I think it showed a lot of people that what we have within the PHF is um, a really strong infrastructure, uh, a great product on the ice. Tim, you're right, the Olympians are not there, but it's still um, all these players that have played under 22, under 18 national teams um, and some really strong hockey and that, you know, they've been at it for eight years. I've only been doing this for one, but they've been at, at it for eight years. And it, um, you know, there's always hiccups along the way that you li- you learn every single weekend how to get better at, at putting on a on ice product. Cause really it's entertainment when it comes to professional hockey at this point. So it's everything else between period, between whistles, between um, before and after the game for the fans and um, all of that. So. Yeah, I, I'm talking a million miles an hour because I'm still really excited that we won. But um, there, I thought there would be a break when we got back. But because you win, you now have to plan all these parties. So mm. we're having a huge party on Saturday at our home venue where all the fans are coming out. And then we're going to the Leafs game. They're going to honor us there. Uh, the girls are throwing out the opening pitch at the Blue Jays game. Um, and they're going to be at City Hall on Friday. So got to plan all of those things before I start the World Championships on Monday. Uh, which I'm working for TSN, which is going to be great, and doing 29 games in 14 days, I think. So, um, super fun. Uh, Emmy, Emmy, maybe the the Leafs should sign a few of your girls, get a little championship pedigree in the lineup. Right? 
<laughs> so I think the best part about um, the whole whole experience was uh, Bernice Carnegie is a part owner of our organization. And Bernice, if, for anybody that's I've ever met Bernice, her father went into the Hockey Hall of Fame recently, but she is just an incredible, incredible lady with just this amazing backstory, but just this amazing sense of perspective as well and this positivity that exudes her. And um, so I think I had had some discussions with this group about, um, you know, tough coaches, uh, players disgruntled throughout the season, all of that. And uh, a week before we left, I had Bernice come and chat with the players and just um, give a real sense of gratitude for where they are and what they're doing and um, all of the shoulders that they have are standing on to be in this position here and all those that you can uplift along the way. So that was really positive. It was amazing. And then in the end, we decided to bring, bring Bernice with us uh, down to Tempe. So um, the little group of staff members that we had traveling um, everywhere from college kids up to Bernice, uh, we were quite the eclectic crew uh, going down there. But Bernice was giving hugs to the players before they were going on the ice. And they were just so appreciative that she was there. And so having her there, that perspective was amazing. But then, um, Brent Dodging Horse came out to the game as well, who spoke to this group. And uh, Brent from Saskatchewan actually lives in Arizona. He and um, one of his friends came out. And Brent meeting Bernice was really powerful because both of them working in diversity and inclusion and having this incredible story within the game of not feeling a part of the game. Um, he just, you could see that he just was so appreciative of Bernice and um, all of that. So. That was really great, but also having somebody like Bernice to give that perspective because it wasn't always an easy year for the players and um, you know they they didn't always feel like the administration or the coaching staff was doing things that they, the way they wanted them to do it. Um, all of you have worked with Geraldine Heaney, uh, who is my head coach and Angela James, probably some of you guys. Um, they you know have a certain way of doing things and uh often it takes a little while to to warm up to that style of coaching so having somebody like bernice there too to kind of soften a lot of it uh, i think was really helpful <laughs>